everyone and welcome back to Soul Stained Eat. My name is Beth and today we are starting my Game of Thrones read-along vlog. So originally I was just going to do kind of a weekly video where I talked about the 100 pages we'd read and how I feel about it and all of that. But I think what I'm going to do instead is a vlog and then you can kind of get my feelings pretty quickly after I've read the different sections. If there's something I want to talk to you about I can just do that instead of trying to write it down and remember why I thought it was important or funny or whatever. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is that one of my very best friends who has lived with me and knows the absolute horror of having to stay up with me in all, now, all hours of the night because I've reread Harry Potter and am dying inside, curled up on the couch in a little ball crying, and you know, you have to get me, you have to get me a Coke and like beef jerky and and chocolate chip cookies and say they're there and make me watch movies that have nothing to do with Harry Potter, like NCIS, things of that nature. He knows, he knows the terror of living with Beth after reading J.K. Rowling. So he's reading book three of Game of Thrones right now. And he said, honey, just don't get attached to anyone. Like, I'm serious. You're not going to be living with anyone except your kid. And you've got to make sure because there's not going to be anybody there to pick up your pieces. And I'm going to say, I told you so. Do not get attached to anyone. And God bless America if the first three characters we meet don't already die by page 23. I mean, seriously. Three characters, three deaths. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. 23 pages. I made it to page 39 in Game of Thrones so far. It is Sunday night. And as you can tell, I've got a little bit of a cold. And I've been packing, so I haven't been able to read more. Um, however, I did just read the first Daenerys Targaryen chapter. I really like her, which is terrible because I'm sure a lot of horrible things are about to happen to her. Um, but what struck me the most is that they are all so young. Like, I did not realize she was just 13. And it's, it's insane. Like, first of all, she's 13. Second of all, the... King and Robert the King and then Ned Stark, who is one of his lords. All of those guys are just in their mid-30s, but there's been so much. Like, they are so young. And I already know George R.R. R. Martin kills everybody, so, like, what's the point in having young characters that can grow and move the story if you're just going to kill them all? One of them, I'm kind of happy he died because I didn't really, the first one that died, I was like, I don't like him anyway. But the other two, I kind of liked them. And I, you know, it's just meh, meh. Um, and the whole dire wolf thing, like finding the dead dire wolf and they're arguing it can't be one, even though we can see it's one because they haven't been spotted here in forever. Um, and what Jon Snow does by kind of taking himself out and saying, let's keep the pups. You have five true true born children and there are five pups so take these back including essentially the newborn baby and the two girls and his two uh, older half brothers but leaving himself out so that his brothers can keep the pups that they found and love and he won't get one because he's had to take himself out of the equation to make the numbers work out and then all of a sudden there's this albino dire wolf that shows up having crawled away from his brethren and is kind of up underneath his dead mother and Jon Snow is like this one's mine. I can see why so many people love these books and this show. I hope it continues. I know that it's going to be harsh in a lot of places. I've been warned um, but I hope it continues like this. I like the writing style all right, I'm going to read a little bit more, and I'll be back to talk about the next little segment in a minute. So I finished reading the next chapter, which talks about Caitlin, who is Ned Stark's wife. And I found it really, really interesting because it's a little shorter than the other chapters, but it actually goes into a little bit of detail about the differences between kind of the southern area where uh, Caitlin came from. She was originally a Tully in the Tullys of the South kind of roll down there and have a god's wood but it's a very open and bright place and they worship in uh, rooms and then they do their reading and picnicking and things out in the bright open god's wood 
to kind of commune with their gods out in the open, but they worship in a room. Whereas in the dark north, where she lives now with her husband, they have an ancient uh, god's wood, and all of their worshiping and cleansing and all of that kind of happens out in the center of this uh, weir wood, I believe it's called. So she talks about how weird the northerners are, and you know, I'm from central Texas. So I kind of understand where she's coming from. I have that same feeling when I meet people from the North, even people from Oklahoma. I'm like, wow, I need to go back to Texas because you people are weird. Just Yankees. Oh my goodness. So I kind of connected, which means she's probably going to die really soon. Okay. So I'm on page 77 right now, but I'm still really enjoying it. Um, we just got to Ned deciding that he's going to have to be the hand of the king for Robert, who used to be closer than a brother to him, but now he's worried about Robert's health and all of that because he hasn't seen him in years. And when the king shows up, instead of being this huge, massive muscle, he's a huge, massive jello. Um, and I mean, that would bother anybody. You know, your best friend shows up and has shown his age basically um but he's decided that he needs to agree to sansa marrying joffrey and to going to the castle and being the hand of the king he's going to take most of the children with him and leave his wife and his oldest and youngest at at Winterfell, I think it's called, at Winterfell. And so Caitlin is not too pleased, but she knows her husband needs to go. The biggest thing that I'm having issue with right now is that every few seconds, if it is in a Ned Stark, if it is in, you know, if it's in an Eddard chapter, a Caitlin chapter, or any of the kids, Jon Snow is referred to, and he is always referred to as Half-Brother the Bastard. All the time. Every time. The Bastard. I'm sorry, but after about the eighth time you say it, it just doesn't mean Jack Deadly Squat anymore, and I'm bugged that you're still writing it. it it's that reference. I know it's important, but it's bothering me to no end that that is the word that is continuously used. There are so many other ways to say that. Stop being repetitive and redundant. There. Okay. I was warned that George R. R. Martin is terrible. I've mentioned several times to you that I was warned that nobody is safe, not to get attached to any characters, uh, animals, young, old, memories, anything. Just don't get attached to anyone or anywhere because things change really quickly. Um, and I think because of all of those warnings, I was able to kind of see a few things as they were about to happen. Um, just kind of the gist of what I thought was going to happen. And I think that saved me from completely freaking out over what just happened to Bran, but I'm kind of a little bit freaking out over what happened to Bran. Um, and I'm not sure if the fact that he didn't immediately die, but has been kind of holding on is something that is a good thing. Or if I, this is going to sound terrible, but I may actually wish that he had passed away immediately. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just finished that kind of beginning section of that subplot. So we'll see um, what happens. But yeah, on a slightly different note, I despise, despise the prince. I'm not very fond of his, oh no, wait, I hate his mother and her brother, um, Jamie. I like the, I like the fool, the little one. What is his name? Anyway, I like him right now. Tyrion, maybe? I'm sure that I won't like him later, um, just saying, but right now he seems okay. And I liked Caitlyn to begin with, um, 
but I just, I can't abide the way she treats John. Like, I can understand, kind of, why she treats John this way, but after so many years, 14 years, 14 years in the same house with this boy being raised with your children, and you can't at least let him come in and say goodbye to his little brother who is lying basically on his deathbed. You can't be nice for five fucking minutes and let him say goodbye. That's just, no, I'm sorry. I don't care. Bad. Bad juju. That were with all of her belief in spirits and prophecies and, you know, all of these symbols and signals and then to act like that towards John. Why does she think bad things are happening to her? Like, if she believes in karma, what in the world does she think is happening? Why does she think this is happening for? Treat the boy better than what you're doing, woman. Jeez. So it is now Thursday morning, and I finished the uh, Daenerys chapter. I did hit the 100 pages, um, like a page into the Daenerys chapter, but I can't leave a chapter undone. So I finished the chapter, and she got married and the wedding ceremony sounded like super interesting like the calls whatever they're called um <clears throat> Nicole and his dark gothians dark coffee whatever they're called I can't Dothrakis the Dothrakis they sounded really interesting like they're weird but interesting and I liked how um, she rode the horse, like she felt really comfortable on the horse and did this big, that was like a big defining moment for her. Um, and it kind of shows us a little bit of where her character is going to go. And then she goes and she's very bold with her new husband, which is great. I really liked the interaction till I remember that she's 13. But if I don't think about the age because she's you know, in a different world, in a different time, and that's normal there. If I don't think about it that way, if I just read it, then it was a really well done kind of wedding ceremony and wedding night alluding to things, but not just being vulgar about it. And I liked how that was done. So I have now finished the first 108 pages of A Game of Thrones. Tomorrow starts the uh, second week of our reading. So if you're reading in the mass market paperback like I am, the page numbers will be 109 to 202. So slightly less than 100 pages, but it gets us to the end of a chapter. And the next end of a chapter was like 218 or something like that. So 202 is good. Um, if you have not joined us in this read-along, but you think that you might want to, I will be leaving the Goodreads group linked down below. I hope that you will run over there and check us out. As far as I know, I'm the only person who has commented on there about the book so far, but hopefully other people are finishing up and are going to head over there and start commenting soon. Um, if you don't have a Goodreads account or don't want to join the group, just please go ahead and make your own videos, or even if you are on the Goodreads group, I guess, make your own videos, comment below our videos. I want us to like cross link the heck out of this. So if you make a Game of Thrones video, link it down below and I can mention the links or share the links with other people. I want everybody to get in on this. It is so much fun. I'm enjoying it immensely. I cannot thank you enough for watching this video and for joining me on this journey through reading A Game of Thrones. I will see you guys again soon. Bye.